everyone. How's your lives, everyone? It's Eric Leamy here. You're watching EML 77 TV, episode 212. I want to talk about the Hall of Fame uh, ceremony that happened last night. It was great. All the inductees had great, awesome speeches uh, from, you know, you got Honky Tonk Man kicked it off, and he performed his Honky, Honky Tonk Man theme song, Cool Cocky Bad, and everybody had, was having a good time. New Day was having a good time, rocking and rolling. You see like Xavier Woods and uh, Big E doing the air guitar thing, and, you know, Kofi Kingston and his kids were dancing to it and having a lot of fun. It was, it was great. It was all about entertaining, uh, entertainment and having fun. Um, so uh, and then you got Tori Wilson did her speech. Stacey Keebler. On, I, I didn't expect Stacey Keebler. I forgot to read that somewhere that Stacey Keebler was going to induct Tori Wilson, and Stacey Keebler still looks gorgeous, more gorgeous than ever before, looking uh, looking gorgeous, great, great to see her back. And Tori Wilson, you know, she had a um, a rough week. Uh, her father passed away a couple of days ago, and um, it was for her. You know, it was the challenge was the challenge was for her to uh, complete her speech. She was very strong, but very heartfelt, and she she got Candace Michelle and Victoria. Victoria was actually there at the Hall of Fame um, in, in the seats, so I'm very surprised that they, the WWE let her in. They said, oh, she's been blacklisted from the WWE. I mean, I don't know why, you know. It's, you know, it said Victoria should be in the Hall of Fame, in my opinion, and she should come back and at least have one more match, and, you know, a lot of people, you know, can be bitter when they're blacklisted and all that, and you know, whatever. So they still mention Molina, and when when Molina's birthday came up, they still have pictures from pictures of Molina, and yet, you know, sometimes you want to go, hmm, why, you know? I like to see Molina come back to the WWE, but you never know for sure. Um, also, they say never say never in this business. That's the thing we gotta be re- reminded of: never say never. And then you got um, Harlem Heat. Being inducted, um, Harlem Heat, very thankful. They've been through a lot in their young days. You know, they've been thankful for Sensational Sherry, um, Sensational Sherry, and you know Stevie Ray's all the suckers got to know. You know, and um, you know they gave they gave shout outs to, to guy you know to a lot of tag teams in the New Day. You know, they were fist bumping the New Day. It was a lot of fun. So New Day got a little, got a little spotlight on them, which is really cool. New Day was having so much fun throughout the uh, entire ceremony. You know, every, every time Corey Graves and Renee Young are talking, uh, when they when they pan over near the ring, you know, both Xavier was New Day were like, mm, you know, they're having a lot of fun. Big E was brought hamburgers. He brought little baby hamburger slider, sliders to the ceremony. I love Big E. Big E is a natural treasure. I hope the WWE does not release him. I hope the WWE plays big for him. Is this that guy? Big E is the most entertaining guy ever. Even outside the ring, you see him on up, up, down, down, having a lot of fun doing this thing, especially with the bowling thing. It was. I love Big E. Big E's hilarious. I love Big. If I got, if I was just, a, was, there's one tag team that I want to meet. One modern day tag team that I want to meet. I want to meet the New Day. I want. You know, I, I would say you guys crack me, crack me up so much. Especially up, up, down, down. Especially Big E over here. <laughs> I would, I wouldn't, I'd be, I'd be too busy laughing and so their antics. You guys is awesome, you know. And yeah, Xavier wasn't Big E. They're, they're the, they're, they're, I think, you know, have Kofi go on singles competition. Have those two continue the New Day on as a tag team. Because I think I think those two are very entertaining. Oh man, I, I, I sometimes I laugh at that. And you know, I think I think the superstars were having some um, a lot of fun uh, when when they were you know they had the pan, the cameras pan to Alexa Bliss and she's like waving high. And then you go over and they, and I think somebody panned over to see J, uh, Jay Uso and you see Rusev. Rusev is great. Rusev is just awesome. Uh, yeah, the superstars were there to goof around and have a good time and to celebrate the legends and, and hear all the funny stories or anything, uh, hear all the funny stories or or interesting uh, inspirational stories, inspirational quotes, and all that. You know, you got a lot out of it here. And um, but um, during the Hart Foundation speech, where Bret Hart and Natalia were accepting on behalf, Baff and only. Bret Hart himself, but Anvil Nyhart, who passed away um, last summer, and Natalia says her father would love this and all. As after she gave her speech, she, Bret Hart was giving his speech, and some 
stupid idiots decided to jump the barricade. And I don't know where security was and all this. They weren't paying. Security needs to pay attention to this. Needed to pay attention to this, but he they didn't. They didn't do their job. Came out and tackled Brett the Hitman Hart. And I'm like, and then all of a sudden, talent, most of the talent, like sitting in the front, first two seats, front rows, and everything, because it was a ring. They swarmed, they swarmed the like got him. Some got a few punches in. Travis Brown, uh, David Boy Smith Jr., the Bulldog son, was there. He got a few punches in. Um, also, even even Dash Wilder punched, got a punch in as well. You know what I'm saying? It just, you know, got a punch in as well. And, so, and one thing, one person saying, oh, he should be sued because, you know, you know listen, the, listen, for that person to say that Dash Wilder should be sued, no. Dash Wilder should not be sued because the guy made the dumb decision, because that idiot fan, supposed fan, found out his name is Zach Madsen. If you check out his Twitter account, guy's looped up in the head. Dude decided to jump in the ring. When you hop a rail, you're fair game. Stuff goes down, it gets real, real quick. Like MVP on Twitter said, stuff gets real, and you get a butt kicking and a trip to jail, and possibly banned from WWE from every WWE event there is. That's why even that's why even I, when I go to the wrestling shows at the Wayland City Festival over the years, the ring announcer always says you can cheer, you can boo the wrestlers, you can make fun of them, make faces at them, and all that. But don't throw things at them, don't try to hit them, don't try to jump around and attack them, or you will be banned. You will be kicked out. It is simple as that. And for those idiots to say, "Oh, it's just the work," or it's and for there's, there's more idiots to say it's the greatest thing that's ever happened. And one guy said, "Oh, thank you for making Jimmy the Anvil Nightheart induction relevant." Relevant? Who are you idiots to think that this is the greatest thing in the world? It, it isn't. It isn't the greatest thing. It would have been a tragical thing. That guy would have had a freaking knife or a gun in his hand, for God's sakes. I mean, you idiots out there that think that this is the best thing ever, oh, it makes made it, re- relevant, made it relevant, are you nuts? Are you freaking nuts? Oh, do they say those will work? Are you nuts? Are you out of your minds for saying something like that? How dare you? Bret Hart is a legend. He survived a stroke. He survived cancer. He survived everything that has been thrown at him over the years since he left the WWE back in 1997. And he still stands strong today. All right? For that idiot fan to, to attack Bret Hart is disgusting and disrespectful. And I, any other adjectives I can't explain... You know, I could say every four-letter word in the dictionary about the Zachary Madsen idiot. That's all he is, an idiot. He's an idiot. He's not a fan. He's an idiot. He's cracked up in the head. He's goofed up in the head. I don't know what's wrong with him. He needs some help. You know, hopefully, I don't know how, how long he's going to be in jail for. But I hope he's in jail for a long time because he needs some, some medical evaluation in in the brain here. I mean, how dare, you know, how dare this Zachary Madsen guy come up? And, then for, and for those of you who said, oh, it's, it's a work... Or it's the greatest thing that's ever happened. How dare you say something like that? That is disrespectful. And if I were you, I would. If I were you, either you shut up or get bent. Because the fact of the matter is, Bret Hart is a legend that we all respect. The Hall of Fame is there to respect and celebrate all the legends that have paved the way for the superstars of today. You know, and I applaud the superstars of the WWE. That was that were there to stop that. They would try to subdue, subdue him. Sometimes the guy would be struggling. Sometimes they would have to throw a few punches in to make sure he learns. To make sure this idiot learns his lesson. All right, that is all. When you step, when you step through, the, when you decide to jump the guardrail, it is your fair game. You are, in, you are, in, you are in their territory. Torrent, you're disrespecting them, and they don't like it, and they give you what for. And the WWE is a fam- as a family. I got to applaud them. I got to thank them. And for doing something like that, for coming together, you guys are the reason why I still watch the WWE, still watch the product today, because you guys look out for each other, you respect each other at the end of the day. You know, when the cameras are off, you guys respect each other, and it's really, really cool. You know, for those of you who want to call me an idiot, Mark or Smark or something like that, I'm a fan, period. I'm a fan of, I'm a fan of the product. And some of these superstars are really genuine good people, and they care about the WWE universe. Some of these superstars. And... And you know what? And Bret Hart is one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. 
and the Hart family is my favorite wrestling family. I have the honor of having Nat and Natalia, uh, Davy Boy Smith Jr., and his sister Georgia to follow me on Twitter. I am honored. I'm still grateful for them. I have, I made friends with a, a, a young man who idolizes Brett the Hitman Hart and who is doing a, a campaign to get the British Bulldog, Davy Boy Smith, as D, um, Davy Boy Smith's father, uh, Junior's father, into the Hall of Fame. Into the W Hall of Fame. He's not in this year. He will be in next year. I can guarantee you that. I am. We are going for this. And, we, and this young man, this young Bret Hart fan, he's decided, Michael Finney, um, with the campaign, he's get, trying to get people to get involved and say, hey, go in and get, you know, you know, go and get, right sign the petition, get him in. We want the British Bulldog in. The British Bulldog deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. You know? And Michael Finney was angry. He was angry at that idiot fan for attacking Birthday Hitman Hart. Michael Finney, I don't blame you one bit, brother. I'm with you. you know? And for the Zachary Madsen guy, you are stupid. You you made the stupidest decision of your life. I don't care what your reasoning is. I don't care if you want to impress somebody. Or you trying to you know, you, you you know, you are you being like that idiot who tried to shoot President Ronald Reagan to impress Jody Foster? Are you freaking kidding me? You know you, you and you're an amateur MMA fighter. You say, "Well, I'm going to put I'm going to put myself on the map by attacking a wrestling legend." I mean, I'm you just, I mean, I you know, Zachary Madsen, yeah, M A D, mad. You're mad in the head. You're sick in the head. You're a stupid idiot. You just made the list. I could say I could have so many four letter words to describe you, but dude, you pay you're paying the price for it now, pal. You are paying the price for it. All right, Zachary Madsen, you're in jail. You shouldn't have never done that, you know. And I'm glad, you know, you know. And I'm glad the WWE, you know, like I said, uh, I applaud the talent that was there, that was on it. Travis Brown and Shaker Man were on high alert. They knew something was happening when that fan jumped over the railing. They tried to be quick, but they weren't quick enough. But that's okay. They got a few shots in, probably. You know, Dash Wilder. You know, hopefully. I think Dash Wilder got the last shot in by uppercutting him. He was mad. I mean, Dash Wilder, probably him and Scott Dawson idolized the Hart Foundation. Okay? And just, it, it's, for for the Hart, for, uh, for Dash Wilder to be, uh, to do that, you know, people say, oh, he should get sued. Like I said, he's not going to get sued because that idiot fan made that dumb decision to jump the rail and decided to, um, to attack Bret Hart, you know, it's just, I, uh, you know, it's really, you know, it's really sad that people had, to, you know, people like Zachary Madsen decided to do something stupid like that. And decided, oh, you think um, hiding himself in a Rasta hat is going to work for you? I mean, are you freaking kidding me right now? I mean, listen, if you if you're there at a live event and get paid, to enjoy the show, enjoy the show, you know, we can laugh, cry, you know, clap, cheer, boo, make funny jokes at them and all that, you know, and you, you, you can mimic them and make fun of them, but you cannot jump the railing and attack, all right? It's not cool. It is not cool. Zachary Madsen will pay a huge price for that, and he will learn his lesson as long as he lives. They need to get his hold of his Facebook, his Twitter, and get him out. Because he's, you know, crazy in the head. Seriously. Really disrespectful. Alright, let's, let's give me a second here. I gotta, uh... And just, uh, I'm sorry, I got to address somebody here on Twitter. They were asking, I was asking, uh, can, the guy got confused, but he's a good, but this person's a good person. But this rat, this Zachary Madsen guy, he needs some, he needs some help. He, he, he needs, he needs to get, you know, you know, if the beatings don't 
teach, deter him from being stupid, I don't know what will. And uh, I don't know what happened, why. I'm sure his parents are embarrassed. I'm sure his family's embarrassed. Dude, if you're going to, like I say, for us wrestling fans, we enjoy these events. We enjoy making fun of these guys. You know, sometimes um, some of the superstars will be, uh, some of the talent will be friends with us and they get to know us better and they're good people. Like like Natty, like Georgia and Davey. I have a lot of fun talking, especially with Georgia, very beautiful young lady, you know, and just, you know, very sweet and is a good person. And, you know, some of these, you know, some of the town here is genuine, good, down to earth people, nice people indeed. And got, you know, I got, you know, I had a picture taken with Matt Taven during his uh, top row promotions days. And to see him grow into now, he's finally the Ring of Honor World Champion. It's great to see another Massachusetts native taking home another title. He liked my tweet on that. Matt Taven, thank you, sir. You know, Matt Stryker, I got to meet him. I said, thank you for you, you're doing an awesome job with Lucha Underground. He says, thank you. Really cool guy. I had a picture with him. I had a picture with the Bushwhackers. Really cool guys as well. And just Spike Dudley, same thing. You know, uh, Spike Dudley, you know, it's, it's really weird. You know, it's really fun, you know, to, to see uh, legends. You know, you never see them out, uh, like really outside. Like, you're running, like, what the heck are they doing here? Well, you know, you feel like, hmm, shocking, you know, you know. All that. Uh, Spike Dudley, uh, when I was working at Ruby Tuesday, it was back in, what, 2005 or 2006 at the time. Um, Spike Dudley came in to visit Ruby Tuesday. Ate a sandwich there. Now, that, if there's a Ruby Tuesday memory, of Dartmouth memory, I always will have with me, it will be the fact that Spike Dudley came to our restaurant, at, ate at our bar, sat at our bar, ate a sandwich, ate a meal at our bar, and with the Red Sox game where Justin Masterson, remember him? Making his uh, Major League debut. And... And I didn't want to freak out. And then all the time, after he left, I said, "Dude, that was Spike Dudley." I, I don't. I, I listen. I, I said, "Listen, I want to let him eat and want to be professional about this." You know, I don't want to disrespect the guy and all. But I have a picture. With, I have a picture with him later. Which you know what? Hey, I would have told him, "Hey, I was. Uh, you were at Ruby Tuesday, and we were eating. I think it's really cool." And I was like, "Thank you for coming in." I didn't want to say anything and and freak out or anything. And he, I'm sure you probably will understand. But it's great to have. A, I have a picture with him. You know, I did the, the 3D thing. It was really cool, totally awesome. So um, it was it was a great it was a great great moment for me. So like I said, some of these superstars, some of the talent, are great people out there. Is that you got to treat them with respect, man? Because they don't, they will not respect you back. You know, if you don't respect them, and that, you know, this Zachary Madsen guy probably has lost respect from all that talent that was that was there, and I don't know what he was thinking. So uh, I found his Twitter, I found his Facebook. I didn't want but you know, the, Twitter is more of an open, open field than Facebook is. So if I were Zachary Madsen when he gets out of jail, I would delete my Twitter. I would delete my Twitter. I would delete my Facebook just because of the dumb decision that he made. That's if I was Zach Madsen. If he, if I was Zach Madsen, after getting out of jail, that's what I would have done. Delete all your social media feeds. Don't even, you know, and get off it for a while because you don't want to hear all the hate that's coming. At ya. But, but what Zach Madsen did was wrong, disrespectful, disgusting, reprehensible. And you know what? It, it, it really irks me that people aren't, aren't like that. Yeah. And so I'm glad that Brett and Natty got back on stage, recovered. They continued on with the speech. It was great. Drake Maverick, I could give my hats off to for grabbing the microphone and say, don't pay attention to him. Let's get this show on the road. Let's do what we came here for. Let's celebrate these great legends. Drake Maverick, my hat is off to you, sir. You are awesome. You're a true gentleman of the sport. Love you, man. Drake Maverick is the man right now. Then you got D-Generation X, who throughout the day showed funny moments of DX and all. <laughs> and DX... <laughs> he went all out. Oh, can we see boobs on television? That was great. And then you have Billy Gunn with the uh, AEW jokes, like uh, this ain't company, you know. And then uh, Triple H, and then you got Shawn Michaels going, "Well, you, you know, leave it to Billy Gunn to ruin everything, you know, to get some big promises and, and disappointing." It's like you're going all in with the all in joke. Oh snap! Oh man, DX not afraid. Road Dog had a heartfelt speech saying thank, thanking his family, thanking the Lord, thanking his kids, and just totally awesome. To see that Billy Gunn saying thanks, thanks his wife and two sons. You no, know, if his two sons are going to get wrestling, the new smoking guns. 
That would be, that'd be great. Uh, but, you know, Billy Gunn, thank you, sir, for all your contributions to WWE. Best luck in A&W, my friend. Uh, salute to, to uh, Billy Gunn on that. And just, you know, Triple H, you know, said the same thing. Shawn Michaels, always does something. You know, X-Pac, you know, all those guys, they really had heartfelt speeches. They were really proud. And they talked about China. You know, even X-Pac made a great idea, which I applaud. And I think they should go with it. A China Memorial Battle Royal. <clears throat> or Ninth Wonder of the World Memorial Battle Royal, whatever you want to call it, they shouldn't rename it. You know, <clears throat> they, should, they should rename it, and it, they should be applauded for it. So, X Pac, good job, man, awesome job. I agree with you. <clears throat> and um, they gave a shout out to Kevin Nash and Scott Hall. Basically, if it wasn't for the collect, they wouldn't be a DX or an NWO. They wouldn't be in the Monday Night Wars. You know, even X Pac thanked Eric Bischoff for firing him and bringing him back to help the WWE win the Monday Night War thing. That was great. You know, Shawn Michaels. You know, he said, "My family's not here because they're embarrassed by me." <laughs> embarrassed of me. And uh, I thought that was pretty funny, but uh, they couldn't be there for some reason, I'm sure, because of schooling and all that. And uh, you know, Shawn's got a sense of humor. And just, I like that at the end when they were coming out with the squirt guns and uh, you know, Triple H was getting Baron Corbin. That was hilarious. It was, you know what they could have happened? They could have had the WWE, the WWE talent have squirt guns in their own going, yeah, water fight, the Hall of Fame. Water fight! Ain't we got any water balloons? You know? But they didn't. They, they, they had a lot of fun, so it was great. Despite what happened with the Bret Hart situation, that, you know, I'm sure they'll get that settled. You know, I'm just really, you know. So, other than that, it was a good Hall of Fame overall, decent Hall of Fame. And I'm hoping that tonight's WrestleMania will be awesome. And the kickoff show will be in less than four hours, unbelievably, right? <laughs> it's going to be crazy about that. So I have yet to eat. i got to get, get going here. I'm going to get off here and uh, post this video about the W Hall of Fame. And I'm hoping that um, you guys enjoyed, um, you know, I want you know, want your thoughts on what happened in the Hall of Fame, what, what your favorite moment was, and, uh, you know, <clears throat> And what do you think? Of, what are your thoughts on the idiot that taught, uh, they attacked Bret Hart? No, obviously you guys will probably get on. You probably guys will agree with me. But you know, like I said, the Hall of Fame is there to celebrate legends, and not for some idiot to have his uh, 15 minutes of fame. You know, I don't know what people are thinking. And I've, I'd be nervous if I was going to a WWE event. I'd be so nervous. Like I don't know. You know, I want you know. Cheer, I'd be nervous and excited. I'd be like. Uh, you know, and see somebody and, and say, "Hey, how you doing?" You know, and or or meeting somebody, meeting some of the WWE talent. I'd be nervous and scared at the same time. I mean, I'd be like, I don't know what to say to them. I don't want to say anything offensive to them or anything like that. I thought they were cool people, and you know, I would be nervous. I'd be if I wanted to meet some WWE superstars nowadays, I'd be nervous as heck. I almost met Sheamus, but you know, that didn't happen because you know, the car dealership, uh, Colonial Honda. And Route 6 weren't thinking straight. So, anyway, so I am just going to um, have a, um, just going to move on. And uh, WrestleMania is tonight. Watch it. All right, I don't know what events are going to be on, uh, what matches are going to happen, what's going to happen. Is Undertaker going to be there? Don't know. People say that he's there. Who knows for sure what's going to happen. What's going to happen to Elias? Elias is probably already ding, 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 on his guitar all night long in New York. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens. So uh, I'll see you guys later. That's all the time here. Uh, we'll talk to you on episode 213, the WrestleMania thoughts, uh, what happened on the card, and I'll probably have to go refer back to my other video with my WrestleMania picks and predictions, so I'll remember who I predicted that is going to win the matches and um, whether or not I'm right. And I know I'm 3-2 in my NXT TakeOver picks. It was great. The NXT TakeOver was, was awesome. And... Um, so, also another funny moment that happened it was the camera battles. That was fun. The camera battles facing Miz and Maurice versus, you know, with Shane McMahon. Miz and Shane McMahon going back and forth. Boo, yay, boo. You know, Shane McMahon's like, yeah, really? No, really? And Miz is like, yeah, you know, having a lot of fun. That was fun. And Daniel Bryan and Kofi Kingston as well. Daniel Bryan. I thought Daniel Bryan was going to grab a chair and start waffling people with it. He's... Save it for the title match, Daniel Bryan. Save it for the title match. <laughs> so the Bella Twins were there. As well, and uh, it'll be very interesting to see what happens. It's going to be a lot of fun T uh, tonight. WrestleMania, the kickoff show starts at five on the network. Can't wait to watch it.
All right. I'll see you guys later. God's blessings to you. Catch, catch you on the flip side. Remember, pay attention. You might learn something. See you in episode 213. Remember, I'll be on vacation all this week. See you. Bye.